it's very hard to be, you know, you live in two, two places. Part of you is here, the rest of the family is in the States, and um, it's, it's pretty difficult, it's pretty hard. It would be a travesty to not have Christians in the birthplace of the Christian faith and not to have Christians there to interpret what happened there. We don't study Bethlehem and Jerusalem and Nazareth and the Mount of Olives merely as historical sites. When I was a small child, every day, I would hear the shepherd walking with his stick and all the sheep and the goats are coming, each one murmuring with a different voice and he is murmuring to each one in a different voice. Later on when I uh, started reading the scriptures, I would link when Jesus was talking about himself as being the shepherd who would know so closely the voice of every one of his sheep. So the stories of Jesus when he said, I know my sheep and they know me, became so alive because Jesus was using images that even a small child would know and remember. I believe Christians are able to interpret those scenes in a different way than simply those who know them as historical sites. Lots of my friends, Christian friends, don't realize, don't even realize that there are Christians in the, in the Holy Land. They've got twisted views. They think everybody is, there is a, is a Muslim and every Muslim is a terrorist. Uh, that's far from the truth. Tony is a farmer. His, his family has been a farmer. They've owned land for, uh, for decades, for generations. And uh, there, the land has been, uh, well, condemned or, or classified for state usage. And uh, he has the papers from the Ottoman Empire, from the British Empire, and it's now in the courts. Somehow I would hope that we could encourage the courts to rule justly, that he might be able to keep his land and stay there. The shops being closed, there are no more people, as this is what I enjoyed most in my childhood. And I still have vivid memories of people walking, standing, shouting, the smells, the, uh, the donkeys walking in between men, carrying carriages, with all these shops that were open. Here, this was a carpentry, this was a barber shop, this was a, a shoe um, for selling shoes, and here we had another a small grocery. And then I saw, I, it's so sad that people are leaving this old place, and it looks as if it's a deserted place nowadays. And this is what we remain with. We remain with dumb stones who are unable to talk, unlike what I had when I was a child. I shudder to think of it. Uh, I believe the Christians there can provide a warmth for tourists. And in the process of showing the biblical sites can help Christians to, to be strengthened in their faith and be strengthened in their way of relating to other faiths as well. One reason I believe that Christians need to stay in the Holy Land is uh, for the sake of reconciliation. In my experiences, 25 years of being a pastor, the, the turning point in a conflict is usually at the point when one party makes a confession and the other offers forgiveness. I know that we don't practice it very well as a Christian faith, but it is in our theology. It's, it's very central to who we are. It's, and I believe that the Holy Land is a unique place that's located between Asia and Europe and Africa and is a unique place that a message of reconciliation can go to the world. So I would like to encourage uh, Christians from all backgrounds 
to, um, to, to give support to the Christians in the Holy Land, that they might stay there, that they might have a vibrant life, that they might be stronger and more courageous and uh, more joyful.